So in this video I am driving my four-wheel drive and an off-road caravan and I have failed to make it up this sand dune. And in the video I'm going to be explaining how I got this far up and how I got the car and caravan combination up over the rest of the sand dune using just these four max tracks which you can see there. So there's the situation, you can see it's close to the sea, um, sand is not the softest it's been but it's soft enough but the big problem here as you see around the corner is that it is a little bit bumpy so that does tend to kill momentum and there's that turn up uh, left turn that I'm going around now and there's this right turn here so it's actually quite difficult to get momentum and it's also difficult to back the trailer down this hill although I did do it a couple of times I'm the ruts I'm significantly helped so that's where you can get a run up from but there's only so much run up you can do when you're going around that corner up to the top there as you can see. So that's the situation we're in and this is an aerial view of where we're at that orange mark is where we start you can see the curve there and what I'm going to do for the rest of this video is explain the theory behind the technique I use and then show you how it worked in practice. So I got the car and caravan as far up that dune as I possibly could by reducing the tyre pressures and using a traction ramp technique called ramps ahead which I'll talk about in a moment but then I got it out from that situation using a technique which isn't often used it's what I'm going to describe now. So your classic way of using a traction ramp is you drive somewhere you get bogged and then you take the ramps out you put them ahead of the vehicle just and dig them in and then you drive out. Now I've got another video explaining that there's a few tips and tricks to it but basically the thing is make sure you dig right down clear the vehicle out and then um, idle out slowly with, with preferably four traction out. So that, that's your classic way of doing it. Now another way of doing it is um, if you know that you can't get up the um, up, up the dune then you can put the ramps ahead of time so I'll just put two here for example you could put them at the top or at the bottom I mean it's a bit of a judgment call as to where they go and then you just drive up and out and the idea is instead of getting stuck then the ramps would give you a bit of extra traction as I say you can put them maybe at the top maybe at the bottom um, close together it's, it's kind of a judgment call and that's what I did to get as far up as I could in conjunction with lower pressures. Now the technique I used once I'd actually um, came to a stock what was, was this. So basically I'm not putting the caravan on but um, you can see I got as far as I could and uh, made sure I didn't um, spin down and I got that far again using the ramp ahead technique. Now what I then found was and we'll just by this green line indicates as far as the vehicles got. What I then found was I couldn't put the boards ahead of the car and drive onto them. I, you know there just wasn't the traction available for the vehicle to be able to do that because of the drag of the of the camper. It just simply wasn't going to work. So what I did is I put the boards behind the wheels and then I backed onto them like that. So you're thinking, okay, well, what's the point? You've actually gone backwards. Well, yes, I have. But what you can do then is then you can actually drive off the boards and then just gain a little bit. Now, you're not going to gain a lot out of that, but you might gain 100 millimetres, you know, just 10 centimetres or something like that. Even if it's um, a foot, um, six inches, it doesn't matter. If you do that often enough you can move forwards and up and out and often you find with dunes as you come over the top um, the slope gets uh, shallower and shallower and it straightens up and particularly if you're dragging a caravan then you, um, you don't want to be going around a corner and that's basically what I did and um, once I'd got that far I then repositioned the boards behind the vehicle rolled back onto them drove forwards and um, each, each time I moved forwards maybe 200 mil um, half, half a meter something like, like that um, maybe what one foot one and a half foot two foot something like that um, and it worked. So this technique can work for you. It just takes an awful lot of patience and time. So now here's a so sped up video to see exactly how it works. The Ranger. And now I'm just going to reverse onto them and that will give me that tiny little bit of run up that we need. So you've got to do this really slowly and also make sure that um, you're not going to go back off the Mac tracks as that will destroy everything. So you go just to about there and you can go just a little bit further. I haven't quite got it in exactly straight on, but that will do, and that's as far back as I can go. 
So here's the range of ready to go. Notice that I've not spun the wheels in it. The back I've reversed onto the Max Tracks, not perfectly level, but close enough. At the front though, what I've decided to do is just jam the Max Tracks under the front wheels, haven't reversed back onto them, which is, which is an option. So I kind of got this hybrid approach going on there and you can see I've dug a bit out, ready to go, and the caravan is also dug out. So that's everything set up. Now let's see how it works. You can also see here the tyres are well and truly deflated and I've dug away any excess sand and the car's pointing in a straight line. Okay, so here's the technique in action. I've rolled the car back um, onto the Max Tracks and now what I'm going to do is just drive it forwards until it just goes off the Max Tracks as far as I can. And that's it. I'm not going to spin the wheels too far. Definitely don't want to dig it in. Um, and that's it. That's as far as I'm, I'm going to get in that particular try. So now it's time to get out and because I haven't gone crazy spinning in, the max tracks are fairly easy um, to retrieve. So I push them underneath the rear wheel there, retrieve the other one. And um, sometimes I put um, uh, sort of straps around the max tracks to make them easier to find. But in this case, um, they weren't very far and so I just didn't bother with, with that. The key thing here is patience, patience, patience. It just takes a long time sometimes to recover. And with sand driving, it's so easy just to spin the wheels and make things worse. Now, if you're wondering why I'm not winching, well, at the moment, I'm not in a position to be able to, to winch because there's nothing, no good anchor point in the way. But as I got the vehicle further around the corner, a winch point became available. And that's a lot of that sh shrub shrubbery you see there. And what I did was just put a rope around quite a lot of that and sort of had multiple small anchor points. Now you notice here I'm backing onto only one set of Max Tracks. I'm going to put the other set to just jam it underneath the front wheels. That's kind of a hybrid option of what I described in the theory part of the video. And I tried that for a while, but then I found it was actually more effective to back on to both Max Tracks as opposed to um, back onto the rear and then jam the others onto the front. But you know, whatever works for you, just um, try different things and see what, what's um, most effective there. The point being, is that backing um, the vehicle onto the Max Tracks is definitely working for me on, on the rear. And um, I tried it the conventional way on the front and then I found backing it onto the uh, front was actually gave me a bit more traction off the line as well. So that's what I did. And you can see here, it doesn't get you a very long way ahead, but it gets you, you know, just a little bit further. Let's get off the edge of those Max Tracks, you can see there. And I only get maybe 200 mil, maybe less than that, but you know, if you can get 200 mil every, what's this, two minutes, 30 seconds now, every three minutes, um, doesn't take long before you've got a meter, then another meter, and more. Now, I haven't moved the camera as you can see, but you can also see that slowly but surely the car makes its way up the hill and just bit by bit, bit by bit, and that's all you need as long as you're making progress and everything's going okay. It doesn't necessarily need to be that fast. And here's another camera angle now. You can see the same sort of thing, very slow but sure progress. Now this would have been quicker if I had another vehicle, it would have been quicker if I had more people, it would have been quicker if I had eight boards or even six boards as opposed to four, but it still worked. And that's the point. There's many different ways you can use recovery ramps to effectively recover a vehicle in sand. They're pretty much invaluable. Okay, let's summarize now and finish up with a video of some learnings. All right, so here's some things to learn about sand recovery. The first one is patience. It's so easy to dig and to set things up, etc., and then you can put yourself back a long way just by a moment's impatience and wheel spin out. So patience is the first one. Now, whatever you, max tracks, traction ramps, they are not magic uh, flying carpets. You can't just throw them at a vehicle and expect that the vehicle's going to get out. You've got to do the work, you've got to dig things out, you've got to lower your tyre pressures as well. That's how you use them most effectively. Um, now the technique I've shown here, it's not ideal. Ideally, you want to be able to just um, come to a stop, dig yourself out a bit, put the boards underneath the ramp and then drive out, uh, under, underneath the wheels and drive out, that's your ideal, or use the ramp ahead or a combination of both. What I did was kind of a last resort, but it's a technique if you need to use it. Uh, don't wheel spin. Wheel spin in sand is, is deadly. Now, I know that there's more wheel slip when you're going through sand as, a, as opposed to, let's say, rock or dirt or something like that, and that's fine. But when you start coming to a stop,
when a vehicle slows down and if as it slows down you're increasing the throttle that's generally a sign that you are going to dig in and dig in deep so at that point you need to give up early drop your tire pressures use your traction ramps whatever else there because once you've dug that vehicle in you're in for quite a bit of work and you know I, I always say this four traction ramps is what you want um, two will not work in many situations four works just just unbelievably well and again just want to say patience just take that extra time, extra few shovel loads of sand, dig everything out, take the time to drop the pressures by another two, three, even two PSI makes a difference, right? Patience is what it is, and then you'll eventually get there. And that moment of impatient wheel spin, that can set you back many, many minutes, if, if not more. So I hope you found this video useful. As usual, any questions, please uh, drop them in the comments, and thanks for watching.